back to the channel, everybody. Hope you guys are doing well. Thanks for joining today. We are on Railroader, but we're not having a normal episode today. Today is something a little different. Today, I wanted to talk briefly about the uh, financial system in the game because I got asked recently to kind of explain to someone how this works. And I thought, you know what? I imagine there might be some other questions about uh, kind of how this is a little game within the game. Now, uh, brief piece of information here I am going to offer an exploit at the end of this video so if you're not wanting to see the exploit because it kind of ruins it <laughs> uh, I'll definitely give you a heads up and you can you know pause the video and stop listening after that if you don't want to but I want to put it out there because I want the uh, I want the devs to eventually find it somehow and if they're not already aware of it of course I haven't checked their discord and uh, I want to see if uh, if eventually they can they can fix it so but yeah, like I said, if you don't want to see that uh, that exploit, I'll give you a warning at the end. And then, of course, just uh, just make sure to stay away from it. So, all right, let's get right to it. So the financial system here is all about, of course, increasing your loan amount in order to uh, buy more equipment. So my loan amount is currently really high because I recently ex expanded into Silva. Um, as such, I had to buy the, I had to buy, sorry, the, the Silva expansion itself. I had to buy the yard in Dillsboro buy some signals, buy the uh, the engine service facility here and the diesel stand. That right there was around 22-ish thousand, roughly. Then I uh, bought like 20 pulpwood cars and I had to buy two new locomotives. That was like another 55 to 60-ish thousand right there. So all in all, my debt went up, you know, roughly 80-ish thousand. Now I've, I've paid off a little bit since I opened it already, but you'll notice my interest payment is only $7,000, however and it's at a 10% rate. So in this game, you pay interest every five game days. And the only thing you're ever allowed to affect is the amount that you pay. You can't change the rate, you can't change the duration or the frequency. None of the normal variables that you have in financial systems in business in the real world apply here. And that's fine because this game is not about managing the finance of a, of a railway. All right, that's, that's what other tycoonish train games are for. Uh, but this one is more about, of course, the operations. However, the finance part of it does play a part because uh, you've got to properly manage your finance in order to expand your railroad. It may not feel like it, but you can expand too quickly and increase your loan too fast and then end up having to pay too much money, uh, more, you know, more than you earn in five days, and that's when you get in a pickle. So really, as long as you're able to pay more than your interest payment or as long as you earn more than your interest payment every five days then you're fine so like right now you know i owe seven thousand in three days well i make like ten thousand a day right now so i've got plenty of money I, in one day i can pay off my interest payment and then the next four days are just straight profits but when you really are more successfully managing the finances in railroader is when your interest payments are less than ten percent of what you actually owe so if I did 10% of 127,000, that'd be 12,700. So if I'm at 7,000 over 12,700, I'm only running actually an effective interest rate of a little over 6%, which is great actually. Uh, so I'm actually beating the market considerably. And to be fair, that I didn't I didn't apply any sort of real strategy to this yet, uh, but I did do some testing and I found out a few things. So here's kind of how it works. So I'm on the fourth day, or sorry, the second day right now of the five. So I've got three more days and a few hours. So this is day number two. So when you're on day number two, every thousand dollars of loan that you add increases your payment by eighty dollars. So you can see that right there. And then every thousand dollars that you pay decreases your payment by eighty dollars, as you can see right there. Now on day one, so the first day after you've made your payment. Every thousand dollars that you increase or decrease affects by a hundred dollars. And then when you get to day three, which would be tomorrow for me, uh, it's only sixty dollars. So you know, borrowing another thousand only increases your payment by sixty dollars. And then when you get to day four, it's forty dollars. And then on day five, right before you make your interest payment, you can only affect this by you know twenty dollars. If you add a thousand dollars in interest or in loan, then that's twenty dollars extra you add to your payment. So in a way, this, this almost incentivizes you to behave a certain way with your loans. But if you will pay down your loans with your excess cash closer uh, to the day right after you have made a big payment, then you can actually cut your finance down considerably. And then if you will 
try to take your loans or your big loans more often uh, closer to the end right before your big payment. So essentially extending your your uh, the value of your loan right before the payment, you can actually, because you're closer to the date of payment, you're actually going to affect the amount that you owe less than if you waited a couple of days after your payment. And this is typically contrary to most people's logic because most people, they when it, they want to pay down the loan as soon as they can and especially right before they owe money. Ooh, let's drive it down, let's drive it down. But the thing is, if you're on the last day, every thousand dollars you pay back, you're only cutting that payment by 20 bucks. It's really not much, it's only 2%. And so that's actually not using your money very well, all things considered, when you could just wait a day and pay down $100 worth. So the trick is uh, learning when to buy, when to add to, the, to your loan and when to pay off your loan. So uh, a, an essential way that you can kind of measure your performance is take a look at your interest payment at any given day. Check to see if it the amount of your interest payment is less than 10% of your current loan. And if it is, then for the most part, you are more or less successfully managing your finances within the constraints of railroader. Of course, if this was a real business, you would apply, you know, basic operating rules to it and you would say, well, you know, we don't want to borrow more than 150% of the value of all of our assets and equity. So you would look at the value of all the railroad's contracts and all the railroad's business deals and all of its equipment and all of its physical plant and those kinds of things. And you would take that into account when you assess how much money you can borrow. And if you borrow above that 150%, then you're typically considered to be over, uh, over leveraged. So, but you know, that's really not something that really matters in this game because this game is all about cash flow. So as long as your cash flow every day, or rather every five days, can pay off more than your interest payment, then you're fine. And I can't imagine a lot of scenarios where that's not true. So for the most part, this part of the game doesn't essentially matter that much. But for those of you guys that are curious and who care about it, this is essentially how it works. Now, one thing I think that they should fix is I think that they should fix it where after you make your interest payment, I personally think that the, when you start your next five-day cycle, it should take your current loan amount that you have and it should uh, bump it back up to, to an actual 10%. So like if I have 127000 in loans right now and then I made my $7,000 payment, then starting tomorrow... In my opinion, it should jump up back to that 10% of 12,700. So that's what that's how I think it should happen. Uh, I think that would help prevent the exploit that I'm about to talk about here in just a minute. Uh, but yeah, at this point, I have finished what I wanted to say about it. Hopefully that was helpful to some of you guys. Uh, if you want to hear the exploit, then go ahead and stick around for a second. If you don't want to hear the exploit, then I would tell you go ahead and thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. But uh, I'm going to take like a five second pause and then we'll talk about the exploit. All right, so uh, with the exploit, here's how here's how it works. And this is why I think they, they need to fix it. So if you wait on the very last day, so you know your interest payment is due in just a few hours, if you will max out your loan as much as you can, so if I you know run this all the way up to 187,000, so $60,000 in loans, and then go ahead and just make that interest payment. Keep in mind that essentially I'm making an interest payment at roughly 2% of all the money I just borrowed because it's, you're, only, you're only paying 20 bucks for every thousand. So if you borrow, in my case, if I borrow $60,000 more, then essentially uh, I'm only gonna pay 1,200 extra dollars. So I'd have $187,000 of loans and I'm only paying 8,200 bucks, all right? And then the next day, you've got like 60000 in cash sitting around. Well, I guess minus a 7000 so you're at, or 8000 So you're like at, what, $52-ish thousand dollars sitting around? Well, then on the first day after you make your payment, if you just pay that whole $50,000 down, well, now you're going to cut like $5,200 off of your interest payment. So now your interest payment cuts down to like 3000 So essentially, because I just waited a day and just moved some money around, I went from $127,000 loan at $7,000 every five days to $127,000 loan at $3,200 every five days. Now, of course, in the real world, yes, you can refinance things and move money around and you can make stuff like this sort of happen, kind of, but it obviously you can't do it every five days and it's not typically as profound or 
uh, exaggerated as as it is in the concept here. But you know, like I said, the game is not about finance, so it's not a big deal that happens. But I personally think that an easy way to fix that would be to make it, like I said earlier, just automatically bump your payment up on day one of a new cycle, you know, to an actual 10% uh, to incentivize you to, to pay down your loan early uh, and to t remove the exploit. So if you wanted the exploit, there you go. Now I know that you could obviously just um, cheat, actually cheat by going into sandbox mode. I'm definitely not talking about that. Uh, I'm really just talking about, hey, within the constraints and the structure of the system currently, here's how you can beat it. But I know not everybody wants to hear that. So anyways, hopefully uh, this was helpful to you guys. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys next time.